Welcome everyone, and we are very glad that you could join us today for the first Indiana State Library's online conference, Hot Topics for a Cold Winter's Day. My name is Kara Cleveland, and I'm the Professional Development Office Supervisor for the Indiana State Library. I will be the host and question moderator for today's webinar. Champions, we are in this together, advocating for libraries on the local, state, and national level, presented by Julius Jefferson, Jr., the 2020-21 ALA President-Elect. After the webinar has been transcribed, it will be available on the Indiana State Library's archived webinars page. If you're watching an archived recording of this presentation, information on how to obtain your LEU will be in the video's description on YouTube. For weekly updates on upcoming trainings and to learn more about what's happening in libraries across the state, please subscribe to the Indiana State Library's e-newsletter, The Wednesday Word, and check our continuing education website for other professional development opportunities. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about Julius. Julia C. Jefferson, Jr. is the section head of the Research and Library Services section in the Foreign Affairs, Defense, and Trade Division at Congressional Research Service of the Library of Congress. In this role, Jefferson leads research librarians who provide public policy research assistance exclusively to members of Congress, congressional committees, and staffers. Jefferson is currently the American Library Association ALA President-Elect and will serve tw during 2020-2021 at the close of the 2020 ALA Conference in Chicago. He has also served on a number of critical ALA committees, including the Finance and Audit Committee, the Budget Analysis and Review Committee, and the Intellectual Freedom Committee, serving as the 2010-11 Chair. In addition to his service to the American Library Association, Jefferson has held a seat on the board of the Freedom to Read Foundation from 2012 to 2016, also serving as the 2013 through 16 president. Served as president of the District of Columbia, Columbia Library Association and served on the board of the Black Caucus of the American Library Association and often called upon authorities and speaker on issues of importance to library workers. Jefferson has appeared on a number of media outlets, including National Public Radio. He is co-editor of the 21st Century Black Librarian in America, Issues and Challenges, and is often sought as a speaker on library-related issues such as diversity, leadership, and professional development. Okay, at this time, I am now happy to turn the presentation over to Julius. Good morning, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great, all right. So thank you for that introduction. Uh, I wanna say uh, thank you for inviting me to speak. It's a pleasure. Um, I, I hope I am able to uh, share some ideas with you today. Um, I have a PowerPoint presentation that we're gonna be following. And just let me say that, so that was a beautiful introduction. I do have a new job right now, and um, I am at work as we speak, like maybe like many of you. Um, I am now um, the chief of the Research and Reference Services Division at the Library of Congress. And so I am in charge of the main reading room and a few other reading rooms at the Library of Congress. And today we're having our open house. So at 10 o'clock, as soon as we finish here, I will be greeting uh, many of the, of the visitors um, that come to see the various collections that we have on display here at the library. So I just wanted to share that update with you. Um, I am going to, usually when I do this presentation, I'm in front of folks. And usually I ask questions. So I may ask questions and I'm, I'm looking at the chat box. So if I ask a question, you can say yes. Um, if, I'm, if you have a question that you want to ask me uh, based on something I've, that I've just said, please jump right in. Um, I usually like to have a conversation. I know in this format, it's a little, um, little awkward to have a conversation, but I have done it before and I, I know um, we can kind of uh, have this conversation and, and, and sort of 
uh, move the push the, the bar forward on um, my today's topic, <clears throat> which is advocacy. So let me, which is library champion, champions, we are in this together. And uh, by library champions, I certainly am talking about all of you. So generally, I usually, I usually ask a question, how many of you are library champions? And everyone says, yes, of course. Um, so today, I want to talk to you about one of the issues I will focus on as the ALA president. And this is where I, I usually say, how many of you are library champions? And I know you are all library champions. Um, I usually ask, how many of you are committed to providing the best service for your communities? And everyone always raises their hand because I know everyone um, who works in a library, who, who is in public service, is always about providing the best service for our communities. So one of the questions that I then ask to try to have a dialogue is then if, if you are committed to providing the best service for your communities and you are a champion for libraries, then what is your vision and how will you communicate your vision to your local, state, and federal appropriators? And will you share the stories of the contributions of that your library makes to your community, and how will you support the issues that we are all faced with? So <clears throat> one of the things that I like to talk about when I, when I talk about advocating for libraries is that advocating for libraries is a team activity. It is not just one person's job to advocate for libraries. Certainly um, at the American Library Association and the members of, of the American Library Association are committed to advocating for libraries, but um, we advocate for libraries in many, many ways, not just those who are library workers, but those who are library users. And that's one of the focuses that I, I will, I will um, be talking about over the next year um, after June when I become president, um, that we certainly are, we need everyone's help to advocate for libraries. Um, I think that library workers do a great job telling our story, but sometimes we need other people to help tell our story. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm going to do to advance us in that effort. So today we're going to focus on um, issues, policy, and of course you, uh, ways that, that you can get involved um, and advocate for your library, advocate for libraries broadly, and how we can all work together um, as this, as I see this as a team effort, uh, advocating for those issues. So when I when I think about um, the issues, um, there are a myriad of issues that we focus on. Certainly, uh, I've listed just a few issues here, but <clears throat> the type of issues that we face um, vary depending on where we are across the country. Um, Funding is at the top of the, li of the list for me, of course. Um, we always are advocating for funding, but what does that really mean? Um, for me, that means that we are advocating um, for privacy issues. Um, we advocate for access to government information. Um, we advocate for um, copyright laws uh, to strike a, a balance, a fair balance, and that's something that's really, really, really um, big right now, especially for, uh, for public libraries, of course, um, uh, for academic libraries, but certainly when we think about um, access, we, we, we advocate for access. Um, the, the big issue right now for a lot of public libraries certainly is, is e-books and um, having fair access to e-books. Um, we certainly advocate for our school libraries and certainly um, net neutrality. So these are just some, some larger issues um, I like to I like to say that when I have uh, been traveling across the country and I talk to people, um, one of the things that people often ask me is how can we advocate for um, pay equity for library workers? Um, certainly, that's a major issue. I know that when it comes to local funding, and and I I say this in every presentation that I give about advocacy that all politics is local. Politics. Um, for me, certainly, is about building relationships, and those relationships start 
um, at the grassroots right where you are. So all politics is local. And people ask me, um, how can we, what can we do, or what can the American Library Association do, or what can we do to make sure that those who work in libraries, they, they give so much in public service to provide outstanding service to the communities that, that certainly have transformed from just being a hub, a hub for books uh, and now a hub for information, activity, entertainment. What can we do to make sure that individuals who work in libraries are paid, are, are having equitable pay? And I say that it all begins in telling our story. It will all begin in telling the story of the type of services and the impact that uh, certainly your library has on the community, the impact. And we're going to talk about that impact um, in, in, in a second as well. So that's just, to me, those are just some big buckets um, without going into anything in specific detail. But I see those as the large buckets when we think about um, the type of issues um, that we are advocating for. Certainly when we think about um, policy, again, all politics starts at the local level. For me, um, we have to think about um, our grassroots, and certainly we want to think about um, what I'm going to talk about uh, in the term that we're now using it at the American Library Association is our grass tops. So we think that um, the funding for your, for your communities uh, uh, comes from your county government, um, certainly um, your relationship with, with your state government, um, but then uh, for the American Library Association, we advocate um, on the federal level. Um, we, we know that last week, uh, the president certainly um, shared his, his budget um, where we noticed again that the IMLS um, would not be funded. And we also know that the American Library Association and its members and those that support libraries certainly raised their voices last year um, in support of IMLS funding, and uh, we were able to get Congress to fund IMLS even at a higher level, and we hope that we're going to do the same thing. Certainly, that's at the federal level. Um, we know that a lot of the federal money trickles down to the state, and then hopefully that money will get down to you. But we also know that on a day-to-day -day basis, your funding uh, certainly comes from your, your local government. I'm looking to see if we have any questions thus far. Okay, no questions. So um, let's talk about um, you. Let's talk about the idea of grassroots uh, funding. Let's talk about um, what it is you can do to build relationships uh, with the decision makers in your community. And that's, and that's really the root of all of the advocacy efforts um, for the American Library Association, certainly trying to provide the type of support that you need at the local level um, to be able to build relationships, to be able to focus in on issues. Um, one of the things that um, we are thinking about at the American Library Association in terms of advocacy is focusing in on those specific issues. Uh, and I'm thinking about this in terms of you know, what are the issues that affect um, the most of us that we can really rally around um, and have the most impact in our local communities at the state level and at the federal level? I mean, that certainly um, entails having a, a broad, robust dialogue. Um, here at, at, at the American Library Association, um, we certainly um, use and appreciate the work that the chapters, the ALA chapters do. Um, I can tell you that um, I serve at the chapter level, certainly at the, in the District of Columbia, not a state, but um, it, I know that the work that those chapter leaders do, um, whether it be representing uh, their chapter on the governing body, ALA's council, or whether, whether it be um, just highlighting those issues, some of the issues we discussed that faced the local communities in their state. Um, Certainly, larger states, smaller states um, are broken down in, into communities. But one of the things that I'm thinking about is how can we 
pinpoint those issues, um, specific issues that affect the most of us that we can now focus on and then we can sort of really uh, hone in on at all levels of government. Um, and I know that that's not going to be something um, that is easy to do, but in the past, the American Library Association has focused on a myriad of issues, and I always wondered how effective were we at the federal level when we always took on a lot of issues. Certainly, um, we, we focus on the big issues, LSTA, IMLS funding, but there are a lot of other issues that trickle up. Now, um, the other thing about the grassroots effort certainly is that we, uh, at the national level, certainly the American Library Association, um, need those contacts um, from the local level. One thing that I, I noticed, and I like to tell this story, is that we just never know where um, your local uh, county administrator may end up or your mayor of your town may end up. Now, Indiana, of course, we know that um, you know a lot about your local mayor because there's a, a mayor in South Bend, Indiana that certainly may be president of the United States. We never know uh, at, the, at the local grassroots level where this politician may end up. I always talk about the idea that um, just not too long ago, um, we had a state senator out of uh, Illinois who became a U.S. senator who became a United States president. And certainly um, who had, had some type of relationship with a librarian who had been in Chicago uh, and then found herself in Baltimore for many years. And when that president had the power to appoint someone to lead the nation's library, the Library of Congress, um, because of that relationship, um, we were able to have uh, Carla Hayden, uh, Dr. Carla Hayden, um, appointed as um, the first female and, and first African-American librarian of Congress. That was because of a relationship, a relationship that didn't just happen just a few years ago, but happened many, many years ago. And who would have, who would have ever known that that state senator certainly um, would have been president? And again, who, we don't know whether or not uh, that mayor in South Bend, Indiana, will become president of the United States. And, and to build a relationship uh, early and to have these uh, local politicians um, become advocates for libraries is very important to me. And it should be important to all of us because this is where it all begins. It all begins at the grassroots level. Now, um, we talk about this idea of uh, grass tops. And this is not a new idea, this grass tops. It's, it's just uh, another avenue, uh, another way to connect. So when we think about um, our grass tops advocates, we think about those individuals who certainly may not um, work in a library, but they are library champions. Um, these are individuals that have, that are connected um, to the power structure. Certainly, um, they don't have to necessarily be politicians, but they are connected or removed um, by one or two individuals to the decision maker, um, the individual who has the power to provide funding, the individual who can see the value of libraries in our communities. These are, are called our grass top advocates. Um, one of the things that we did here at the American Library Association is uh, start a program where we can really focus on um, our grass tops. The grass tops certainly are at the local, state, and federal level, but these are individuals that, and I like to talk about this idea of, of degrees of separation, who are removed or, or very close or one person removed from that individual that can be the game changer when there is a particular issue of facing libraries. Um, it could be someone who you go to church with who knows the decision maker. Um, it could be someone who is in one of your social clubs, um, who we cultivate as a grass top advocate. Um, someone who's close to a decision maker who we put in a Rolodex and when we need to get in contact with that decision maker, we say, who is that grass tops? Who is that person that's connected that we can call on to get us in contact with the decision maker that so we can sort of advocate for this particular issue facing life? 
And these are, these are individuals are our grass top advocates. So we have grassroots advocates, we have grass top advocates. And what we decided to do was create this whole idea using our grass tops and grassroots, this idea of a national network of advocates. Now certainly we create this national uh, network of advocates not to undermine any anyone at the local level, but to sort of leverage the influence that you have at the local level to help us at all levels, at the state and the and the uh, federal level. So we have a a uh, a working group, um, an advisory group, I should say, um, that I actually sit on uh, for the National Network of Advocates. Um, we are are cultivating individuals um, and training them to be able to hone in and create that Rolodex of individuals uh, who can get us to the decision makers. We want to do that nationally. So we're, what we're saying is we're, we're taking the grass roots and grass tops approach and we're putting it in a Rolodex and we, we want to be able to call on you, call on the grass roots and grass top advocates at the local level to help us. Certainly, um, if, if in fact, uh, someone at the local level needs assistance. We want to be able to provide the, the assistance to you at the local level. Um, but the most important thing is that we want to build and strengthen relationships with all our decision makers uh, and their staffs nationwide. One of the things that people don't quite understand is sometimes uh, when we do advocacy, um, we focus not necessarily on the, the, the member, let's say at the federal level, the member of Congress, um, or even at the state, or local level, we focus on the staff, the staff there, because certainly we know how important the staff is to our our decision makers, and sometimes it is the staff who we build these relationships with. So we're really we're really thinking about the bigger picture here is building strong relationships at all levels of government to advocate the best interest of libraries to provide outstanding service to our communities. So we think that you certainly fit in whether you are a grassroots advocate or a grass tops advocate. Um, and certainly um, you may be a part of the, the national network of advocates that we are developing. And um, you're gonna be hearing more about the national network of advocates uh, in the coming months. Um, we just put, an, again, an advisory team together. Uh, we have a, a few uh, advocates on board and we're training them and we're, we're still in the pilot phase. Um, but, but the goal is to really uh, be connected across the country so we can be uh, nimble, uh, efficient when it comes to responding to those issues, uh, regardless of what level um, it may be, the local, state, or federal level and certainly providing the type of support that you may need at your local level. Again, um, we, don't, we, we know that um, we certainly, the American Library Association, um, doesn't know all of what's going on at the local level, but we want to be able to assist you. And, and if, if, if we know of individuals um, that can help you, we want to provide those names. And certainly, if you know of individuals, you, we, we hope that you can provide names to us. So when we move up the chain and, and we have some type of federal um, legislation that we can call on on your folks as well, whether it be at the state level or the local level. So that's you. I don't see any questions, and I hope everyone is still awake. Um, I didn't I didn't say anything because this this is about a cold uh, day, but. You know, uh, this is the warmest February that we've had in quite some time. Here in D.C., it's going to be uh, 51 degrees, so it's not too cold. But I do have a scarf on, if you could see me. All right. So let's talk about let's talk about um, being active and engaged. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what I am going to be focusing on. Um, when I become ALA president uh, this June. So um, I will be uh, undertaking. <coughs> oh, great. Um, someone, uh, Susie says it's a nice day there too. Great. Um, I am not, 
I am not a fan of the cold, cold weather, although I do like um, the change of seasons. So, and, and, th so, and this goes into this, this library tour. So you see, I have library tours, the first thing. So I, I, I'm, I was thinking, um, what if, what if um, we took the American Library Association across country and we met with um, libraries and library workers and those who are champions for li champions for libraries um, uh, across the country and, and, and specifically at those libraries that I consider to be underrepresented. What if we did that? And what would that look like? Um, and many people say, oh, that's, what are you talking about? I said, well, I, I want to get on a bus and I want to meet people. I want to meet people who provide uh, service to their communities and, and their, their local libraries. Um, and I want to do this uh, from coast to coast. I want to do this. I want to start at my library, the Library of Congress. and I want to end up on the West Coast, and um, and I want to go to libraries that, that um, are rural libraries. I want to visit Hispanic-serving institutions, historically black colleges. I want to uh, I want to visit prison libraries. I want to visit tribal libraries. Um, I want to visit libraries that provide services to the blind and physically handicapped. And these are often um, what I consider um, to be the most underrepresented of our country. And um, I, I know that uh, ALA has, has never done this before, but I said that, that I want the goal for me is I want to meet people. I want to bring back the stories. Um, I want to bring, I want to be able to share these stories because I think what's missing, certainly when we advocate, we can give a, a lot of data, but what I've found is it's the narrative that is most important um, to the member of Congress or to your, your, your state legislator or to your, your county official. It's the narrative of what the libraries are doing, how they transform the lives of the communities. I mean, you have to think that I want to I want to show that if we didn't have some of the, these library workers and, and these libraries, we didn't have them. What would our communities look like? I want to be able to bring these stories um, uh, back to the American Library Association so we can use them when we're advocating for, for funding. Let me see. I'm looking at a couple of uh, a library tour will be very impactful. Yes, Wendy. Yes, exactly. Um, we here in the middle of the country often um, feel ignored. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> in many instances, what I found is I, I, I find myself going coast to coast and flying over um, many of, of Americans who um, are often forgotten about um, and, and they serve uh, under, underrepresented communities. Um, so that's why we're going by bus because we're going to try to hit now. Now, of course, many people say, well, you, you, um, the, our tour is going to be uh, starting in D.C. and we're doing a southern route. Um, so we're going to actually go all the way down to the border, uh, McAllen, Texas, uh, and hopefully we'll visit with the representative uh, Will Heard there. Um, but we want to we want to we want to see the type of services they're providing uh, to folks at the border. Um, this is a, a really big issue um, because libraries are doing some great things, and I just think that that most Americans don't know um, the type of impact libraries have on our communities. Um, so we're going on a southern route. We're going to be in. In Pennsylvania, some rural areas in Pennsylvania, um, uh, we're going to uh, wind our way through Oklahoma, uh, wind our way through Texas. Uh, we're going to uh, go to uh, Arizona and Nevada. Um, we uh, will not be able because we're going to do this right in July, where it's warm. <laughs> um, uh, so like the last week of July, the first week of August. Um, school will not be in, but we hope to visit some libraries in Nevada uh, who are 
providing outstanding service to children during the summer. So we want to highlight, um, you know, what libraries are doing uh, in the community for, for the children over the summer. Um, yes, Kentucky, Tennessee, we're going to be in Tennessee. Absolutely, we're going to be in Tennessee. Um, yes, it, yes, I agree. I agree, Wendy. We will be in, we will be in Tennessee. Um, we have so, I mean, I think that the library workers are doing so much work uh, to serve their communities and we just don't know about it. We're just not bringing back these stories. I think that's, I believe, and I hope that this is gonna be the game changer. Right? I believe that um, certainly a lot of these places have never had the American Library Association visit them. So we hope that that's a boost for them, right? That we're paying attention. I, I believe they're important. Um, so that's a really big thing for me. Um, <clears throat> we certainly believe that um, when we meet folks, um, uh, when and 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 and, and the other the other piece of this is that it's not this experience is not just for um, it's not just for me going across country, but it's for all of you to follow us online. So there's an online component to this. We want you to follow us, right? We want you to to be engaged with us, right? We want you to be active. Um, we we hope to get some vendor. Uh, support because we know that um, many, many uh, of these libraries we will be visiting never have the opportunity to go to a, an American Library Association conference and meet vendors. So we hope to be able to have um, vendors um, have access to their information on websites. Um, and so these individuals will have and hope to give out some swag on the, along the way to maybe expose some folks to some vendors that may be able to help them in their communities. Um, we understand that many of the many of the places that we're visiting are not very connected. Um, you know, I deal with a lot of librarians and they're very connected. They go to all the conferences all the time. Um, they, they built this community, but we're not going to visit these individuals uh, on this tour, not on this tour. And, and when we complete this tour, um, we have plans to visit other places that are, are not on this particular route. So we certainly will, will be visiting some places up north. Um, I've already been uh, and I've visited uh, some places in Georgia and Florida. I will be in, in Tennessee um, with school librarians sometime early next month. So um, I'm, I'm focusing on a lot of advocacy, but I'm really focusing on telling your story. It's your story that is important uh, to me, and I, I think will be valuable uh, for our our legislation, our legislators, our decision makers. Your story is what I want to focus on, and so um, again, we're gonna we're gonna start coast to coast. Um, steps of the Library of Congress end up in uh, Silicon Valley. Hopefully, um, we we can uh, end up uh, and, and visit Google. Because we want, we, we certainly want Google to, to be an active participant in being a library champion. I think Google certainly can do more. Um, but we, we are, it, it, it is all the places that we visit in between um, that I think can make the difference um, for not just any specific type of library, but highlight all of the work that um, libraries do across the country. So that's the, that's the, that's the first thing. Um, active engage um, the the ALA 2020 library tour across country um, uh, has a um, the online component so we can be engaged there we'll, we'll, we'll be tweeting stuff out um, folks can give us their thoughts and and the, the, the best thing about the tour for me or one of the best things about the tour for me is that that we're using um, all the chapters all the chapters are on board um, to sort of help us navigate um, these local areas that we'll be traveling to. So we're coming to, you know, many places there. We're coming to someone else's home and, and, we, and we, put, uh, we put the idea in their head that they're going to host us, they're going to tell us where to go, um, they're going to connect us. So we want to even build some stronger relationships within the chapters. I, again, I, um, the chapters are very, very important to me and very, very important 
for the American Library Association in terms of advocacy. So that's another great thing that um, I will be able to meet many, many um, chapter leaders um, as we go across country. So that's the library tour. Um, so I will talk a little bit about this. You'll see something says a congressional fly-in. And, and we actually just did uh, the congressional fly-in uh, last week. Um, this, was, this is our second time, the American Library Association, second time doing this uh, congressional fly-in. So, so, so you'll see there's a congressional fly-in, and then you'll see this Library of Legislative Day, which, which um, is going to happen this year. But the fly-in takes a different approach. So what, we're, what we were thinking about this fly-in is that you have all these issues, um, but when we begin to focus on on a few issues, we want to kind of get ahead of the budget. So the fly-in was last week, so it's kind of it's it's right uh, ahead of the the congressional budget cycle, which actually will begin um, later this month, early February, where they begin to have hearings, and um, it's putting some of these key advocates in front of their members who sit on. Um, committees that that um, that certainly uh, have an influence on library funding, and having uh, that dialogue just to reiterate what's important uh, for libraries. So this is very strategic and very targeted. Um, this this is this approach we believe, and 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 when we began this last year, many people said, "Well, why aren't we included?" Um, I think there will be a time where everyone will be asked. Uh, to participate. Um, again, it kind of depends on where your member is situated in Congress, what committee, um, you know, uh, and, and how we can sort of um, leverage uh, your relationship with your member at that particular time. So we've been very strategic about who, who's going to be there and how we're going to use and build on these relationships. So this is just another strategic approach um, to advocacy at the federal level. And I think the fly-ins went real well um, this year. <laughs> now, some of the, you know, it's interesting, uh, of course, this is an election year, and um, some of the participants uh, had made um, appointments to visit uh, certain members on the Senate side, and and, and several of the members on the Senate side, however, weren't there because they were in New Hampshire last week. Um, but nonetheless, as I said before, it's not just about the member. Certainly, it's about building relationships with the staff. And, um, and the feedback I received was that um, there were some good conversations with staff. Um, there were, I think, some folks had tweeted out um, uh, so, some of the outcomes. I think um, one of the members in Maryland, Jamie Raskin, tweeted out, <coughs> I think um, we had a member, Joe Thompson, visit his office from Maryland, um, tweeted out that he didn't know uh, some of the things that were that the libraries were doing and impacted the community in certain counties in, in Maryland. He was not, he was unaware. And so this is certainly an opportunity to educate um, these, these members. And so again, this is a, another strategic approach a focused strategic approach to advocacy, um, certainly using the grassroots and grass tops approach, right? So that is the congressional fly-in. Now, many of you, and I wish I could be in front of you because I could ask you this question and I can see all your hands uh, hopefully go up. Uh, many of you have participated in the Library Legislative Day. Um, we didn't do Library Legislative Day last year. We're doing Library Legislative Day this year. Um, it's May 4th, 5th, uh, 2020. And um, one thing we found out, certainly, um, is, is the, the, and I <clears throat> had the opportunity because um, I was president of the District of, the Dis District of Columbia Library Association to, to be the host. The DCLA is the host for Library Legislative Day, has been for many, many, many years. Um, and so I, I, as president, I was able to greet all of the, the folks who were in town uh, to legislate for libraries. 
Oh. Oh, primary day. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So you don't send folks to National Library unless they're the thing. Well, I can tell you, <clears throat> certainly, um, it's, uh, it's 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 a it's a good um oh yeah they're there right 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 very good it is it is good to be in front of your members whether you come to DC um with the um yes yes thank you um it's a great it's it's a great experience when you can get before your member whether you do it with with um, other chapter leaders and, and other uh, chapter members here in DC or whether you do it um, right where your member is. Um, and, and that's a really good point because uh, going back, I'm gonna step back a second, go back to the library tour. We chose <clears throat> the end of July, um, the beginning of August for a reason. And you kind of um, highlight that reason. So in August, um, many of you know, Congress usually goes uh, out, goes on recess, and so those members will be back in their district. So we hope to be able to connect with some of the members in their district, so not on Capitol Hill, because I think it's great value to 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 meet with your 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 members, not necessarily here on the Hill, but right right in the communities where, that they represent. Right to me, that's a bigger deal. So we can make a better connection um, of the value. I can tell you being on the Hill for many, many years, most of my life, um, I mean, we kind of live in a bubble um, and that's, that's the reason why we're going on the tour. Um, but, but nonetheless, the Library Legislative Day is still very valuable. For me, the value is meeting uh, the other chapter leaders um, and, and conversing with them about how, what they do in, in their state. Um, of course, uh, all our states are different, but I mean, we can all share in the strategies of connecting. Um, and there's, there's training there uh, and individuals will speak. So those of you who have been know that it, it is valuable um, for the bigger picture. Just give you an idea of, of strategies you can take and how, how to approach and, and build relationships with, with members of Congress. Um, certainly now that we have, uh, we are really emphasizing our grassroots and grass top efforts um, is, is a, an, a way to build upon um, those relationships, the grassroots and grass tops. But um, May 4th to 5th, 2020 um, is, is another way for um, folks to be engaged. So this, this part is talking about being active and being engaged. Um, and so we, we really believe that um, at least this year with the tour, um, and I don't know if the, if the tour is going to be something that we'll ever do again. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll find out. Um, but with the fly-in and with Library Legislative Day, um, we have opportunities to connect um, with individuals, and we have opportunity to connect with our decision makers uh, at the federal level. And to me, that's important. Again, the tour um, certainly. We have an opportunity to develop relationships at the local, state, and and federal level. Since uh, members will be on recess, and we may meet them there. Um, the fly-in, uh, just another strategic approach um, to be able to share and tell our stories with decision makers, and the library legislative day, an opportunity to uh, get in front of your your member here on the hill. Um, but more importantly, for me, to be able to connect with um, other delegations and meet other folks and share your, your experience. So big picture, active and engaged. Active and engaged. So um, I see we have about 15 more minutes. I ran through that and this is my first time giving this presentation in this format um, where I am not necessarily, uh, can't be too engaged with you, but um, do you have any questions about anything that I talked about? Thank you, Susie.
what one thing would you recommend everyone on the webinar, webinar do this week? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so I, I would think in, in terms of um, advocacy, I think the one thing that I would recommend everyone do is um, find out how you can connect to your decision maker on a local level. Um, everyone's typing. So find out how you can connect. So like, for example, um, for me, um, do you know, do you know staff members? Uh, if you, if, if your funding come from uh, the county, do you know the staff members who work for your county executive? Um, are you familiar with those individuals? Have you built relationships? Have you invited them to your library? Um, I, I, I hope that every, I hope when you, when we're done, folks, um, take away that I'm talking about building these relationships. You can't build the relationships um, inside your library. You have to go outside your library and build these relationships. And I'm hoping that um, you can begin to connect. Invite someone to a program at your library. That's one thing everyone can do. In invite one of the decision makers, staff, invite them. I'm, I'm sure that their, their children probably use your library. Invite, invite their kids, let them know that this is what's going on and engage them. Engage them um, the best you can. Let's see. Um, thank you, Lucinda. We appreciate ALA's leadership on the national issues like copyright and great. Ebooks, yes, and 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 thank you to all of you who signed on the petition for ebooks. Um, we we need all of your help. We, again, we are all in this together. This is certainly not something um, that it's not ALA's job, right? It's not just ALA's job. ALA are just letters. A, a, the American Library Association consists of human beings that are champions for libraries. So this is about. Um, being able to build on new champions, right? And that's another thing I hope you all can do is develop some new champions, right? Find out who the new champion for your library is going to be in your community. Indianapolis. Oh, so that's one thing I was going to, um, Kimberly, one thing that I was going to mention. So um, in January of 2021, the American Library Association's uh, midwinter event will be in Indianapolis. I will be there. Um, I'm hoping to engage. Uh, I, can, I, I probably will be there early, and I'm hoping that um, I'll be able to engage with folks in, in, in Indianapolis. So on the tour, there are, um, I don't know what just happened, but on the tour, there are, there are um, limitations, so I will be reaching out. So certainly, um, I'm going to be in Indianapolis, and I hope to see you there. Julius, that was me. I switched that over so people could get your contact information and the certificate for today. Okay, okay. Oh, Thank you so much for doing this for us today. We really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. I see Kimberly said that she's tried making connections um, with her city council, county counselor. No luck with state reps. Yeah. Um, Sometimes it, it, when we talk about this idea of having grass tops and you say you have no luck with state reps, sometimes you, you might have to find out um, who you know that has a relationship with someone, one of your state representatives. Um, and th that's what we're talking about, relationships. Oh, yes. Legislative lunches. Yes. Let's see, I'm, I'm reading, I'm trying to keep up. Yes, yes, hosting the lunches, hosting lunches is, I think is a very good idea. You, you have to get them inside, you have to get, you have to get folks um, on board with telling your story. Again, this is for me, this is, we tell our story well, right. But we need other people to tell our story.
come to East 38th Street. Well, if you invite me, I'll come. <laughs> yes, I know those people are, they're probably lining up right up right now, right outside. <laughs> Or people coming at 10 a.m. to visit the library. Okay, I'm invited. All right, Wendy. I'm invited. I'll be there. Anytime. Okay. All right, Ken. Thank you. It looks like uh, the certificate part is messed up and it's actually a picture of Julius. So I can send your certificates uh, to your email address, which I will have after the webinar. Just so everybody knows, that's an old picture of me. <laughs> I wish I was that young still. <laughs> Julius, it's really great hearing all these ideas that you have to connect with everyone this coming year. Thank you. Thank you. I hope to see many of you, um, neither uh, when I come to your state in uh, January of 2021, or perhaps uh, if any of you will be attending um, the American Library Association's annual conference in Chicago, um, I certainly hope to see you there. Just grab me and say hi and say we met uh, on on the on this uh, online environment, and I'd be happy to say hi to you. Are you expecting a lot of people at the open house today? They are expecting a lot of people. Yes, we, we, we have uh, 43 volunteers. Oh, um, wow. A lot of folks, yeah, that's that's quite a bit of, it, it was a, it's a lot of coordination putting the yeah. open house together. So we do it um, President's Day and Columbus Day. Oh, okay. I will be in Houston uh, when in Texas come to the Houston area, particularly Walla County. I will, we will be come, going through uh, Texas. And I'll be in Houston actually um, next month for the Texas Library Association's conference. Okay, we do actually have the LEU certificate up now in the first box if you wanna try to download it. I will also send it in the follow-up email. Well, I want to say thank you again for the opportunity to, to speak with you today. Um, thank you. I'm glad it's not cold. I'm glad the <laughs> weather is a little warm. <laughs> and um, I really look forward to, to meeting you all in person um, sometime in the very near future. Well, we're very happy to meet you, even if it's virtually. So we hope you have a great day. Thank you. You too. I'm thank signing you. off.